Welcome to State Television Company, Western Armenia. Today's broadcast. The current situation and challenges of Armenians of Jezera. Opinion of Nevzat on Aran. The victims of genocide are not only those who were killed. Edita Gazilia. Olympic ranking tournament. Our Tur Bazayetian. Second victory. Shaul Lanz Navur's musical plot track presented an interesting life story. Rasulain is a rural town located in the northern region of Hasid province bordering Western Armenia occupied by Turkey. After the genocide against the Armenians in 1915, it became one of the refugees of the Armenian people like Derzor. As Gnahatakat's preschool was operating there as well as the Armenian church, St. Jacob, whose guardianship was taken over by the church under the leadership of Hovannes Sadjian. Before the Syrian war in 2011, the number of Armenian families reached about 14 who settled there after the genocide and led a peaceful life, some as artisans, some engaged in farming and some engaged in repairing electrical tools. Women were housewives. They were engaged in the Armenian upbringing of their children. Some were teaching at the National College. A pharmacist named Sarpun prepared prescriptions using various plants. Rasa and Ayil, St. Jacob Church, had its own priest in the past, but as the population described, the church had its own visiting priest, St. Hasiche. The spiritual pastor of Hovane's church, Dermesop Petrosan, who visited the church to take care of their spiritual needs of their residents. Later, due to his father's ill health, he was succeeded by the spiritual pastor of Gamishri, Father Zak Berberian, again as a visiting priest. During the Syrian war, armed terrorist group attacked and captured the city twice, and from the first captured Armenian family, desperately fled Rasulain, setting in various regions of Jezera, some later abroad. Fortunately, after the first capture and liberation of the city, we had the opportunity to go there and examine the situation. We visited the National College, and the walls of which bore traces of ballots. The damage was somehow bearable. They also saw the surroundings of the church, near the entrance of which we saw a hole filled with probes. Apparently, a mine or a bomb had exploded. Unfortunately, after a short time, Rasulayim was again occupied by Turkish terrorists in October 2019, and remained occupied until today. Currently, there is no Armenian resident there except Mr. Revenge of Keshishan, who is selflessly and willingly living there, despite his wife and children moving to Hasid. He insisted that he cannot live outside his birthplace. He supervises the church and the national school, and he is in constant contact with the vicar of Jezair, father with Levon Yerian and the officials of the school. Western Armenia TV presents an excerpt from the article of Turkish journalist, writer, analyst Navzat Onaran, entitled April 24 from Hamidi, published in Turkish and Kurdish Bilingual Dilo Part magazine, where Onaran made a brief and brief reference to the Turkish Sultan Abdul Hamid. From the second period to 1915, genocide policies and actions against Armenians during the genocide against Armenians. The Etihads, by way of Abdul Hamid, the Unity and Progress Party Young Turks opposed the tyranny of Abdul Hamid together with the Armenian revolutionaries and the Union and the Progress Committee, which in 1914, as a result of the January COP, left its revolutionary line as the only part in the power. It will be a follower of Abdul Hamid's policy of exterminating Armenian and Christians in order to Islamize Western Armenia. According to Tarek Zafar Tunayan, the Union and Progress Committee turkified its program from 1911 and after the assassination of Grand Vizier Mahmoud Shevak. His ideology, which he transferred from Ottomanism to Turkism, is unique and became official. Armenians were targeted in 1914 from August 2, when the German-Turkish alliances agreement was signed. I summarized the period from August 1914 to April 24, 1915. The first, all Armenian men under the age of 45, like the Ottomans of all nations, were called up for military service on August 5 with the declaration of conscription. The second, with the passport of September 6, 1914, the leaders of the Armenian nation were monitored. Third, from September 1914, the topic of the enemy in the language of the correspondent was the Armenians. The four, six months later, on the February 28, 1915, Minister Taylor's official statement, Armenians are internal animals. The 5-1. The Ottoman Empire, which entered the war on November 11, was defeated by Russia on January 4, 1915, in Sariramish. And the 6. In November, in the correspondence between the governors of Bitlis, Erzurum, and Van, with Minister Taylor, an agreement was reached on what to do with the Armenians. 
7. We learn from the Saipar of the Governor of Erzurum, dated December 1, 1914, that the decision adopted by the main committee of the Union and progressed in order to prevent the Armenian Revolution was transferred to one on Bitlis. 8. Armenian soldiers were disarmed on February 25, 1915. 9. From March 4, 1915, under the temporary law, gangs of prisoners were created and sent to the front. Six years later, these prisoners were pardoned by the law of the current National Assembly of Turkey. 10. On April 19, Governor of Erzurum, Tashin Uzer, studied the information he received from the governors of Van and Bitlis. The Armenian Revolution began in Van. The Armenian issue must be resolved. 11. Reports from Van, Caesarea, Diyarbakir, Harbert, Malash, Adana, Eskisesi, Rufa, Samsun, and Edina before the Russian occupation on May 16, 17, suggest that the state had complete supremacy in the field. 12. According to the information of the Third Army of Van, there is a military force of eliminate the besigned Armenians in the city of Russian occupied Van on May 19 in Itehad government, expecting victory focused on the internal animal after the Russian occupation. No Ottoman document mentions that the territory that was under the control of the Armenian rebels, self-defense forces, and where the state power could not enter, the state dominates everywhere. During a meeting with journalists, the director of Armenian Genocide Museum Institute, Edith Dagazoya, noted that today we live in the age of digital technologies. It is not possible to keep the Turkish society isolated from the history. Based on the real facts, as a result of just a light search on the internet, one can read the whole truth about the genocide against the Armenians. Our English publications give us the opportunity to greatly expand the number of our readers. Also, through our website, we regularly provide scientific information available to the public. I would like to mention that the website also works in Turkish, and basically all our materials are translated and distributed that way. I should mention that Turkish citizens come to the museum every year, who visit the museum and also get to know their history through that. The printing and translation of the memory are also important, because they bring it written directly by the su survivors of the genocide in terms of impact and depth, and are also important for the citizens of the criminal state to better understand the genocide committed against the Armenians, because they provide an opportunity to understand through the genocide past the path of the victim to see the criminal presented by the victim. To the question that century later a shame of the genocide found its manifestation in Artsakh as well, has the Museum Institute planned or undertaken everything to raise this issue in international courts? Gazoyan answered. On territory of the memorial, we have two components related to the history of Artsakh and Azerbaijan's anti Armenian policy. On the territory of the memorial, there are graves of five freedom fighters who died at the beginning of the first Artsakh war, free Khachkar dedicated to the Armenians of Sumgait, Kirovabad, and Baku in 1988 1990. Taking advantage of circumstances, we also present to all delegations the history of Artsakh, issue connected with the genocide committed against Armenians, and explain why those graves and Khachkars are part of the genocide against Armenian memorial complex. Those manifestations of anti armenianism and violence against Armenians by Azerbaijan were in people's perception a continuation of the genocide against Armenians, and that is why the Khachkars and the graves were placed in the area of the memorial complex. I should mention that a special issue of our English magazine was published, dedicated only to the Artsakh issue, and about five different scientific articles on the cultural genocide, the Sumgait pogroms, the legal analysis of the Artsakh issue, and also on the manifestation of Armenian history trying to present it in a comprehensive way. Moreover, I should mention that in the last volume of 2023, we have two more articles on ethnic cleansing, one of which I authorized myself with my colleagues, and the other one I was written by the president of the Lemkin Institute, Eliza von Jodenforge. European Vice Champion Artur Bazayan won the second victory in the Olympic ranking boxing tournament held in Bangkok, the capital of Thailand. In the 1 and 16 final of the 55 kg weight class, Artur Bazayan defeated the representative of Jordan, Yusef Yashaha. In the qualifying round, Artur Bazayan defeated Imag Azul, representing Morocco. The Olympic ranking tournament will end on June 3. Armenian boxers don't yet have a ticket for the Paris Olympic Games. Many people know Charles Navour as a famous chansonnier, the author of more than a thousand popular songs, a brilliant performer and an inimitable artist, but few know that Charles Navour also wrote musicals. This fact was revealed by Alexander Spetnaya, National Academic Theatre of Opera and Ballet, presenting his colorful and impressive musical Lotre on May 24 on the occasion of the chansonnier's 100th anniversary.
with Azna Wars unique music, beautiful stage solution, bright acting, colorful and bright costumes. The musical tells about the 19th century French painter representative of post-impressionist Henri Toulouse, Lautrec, an artist who lived a rich, interesting, but also sad and dramatic life. This was all for today. I wish you good weekends. Goodbye.